Dodo is living his life right now like the doctors have given him one day to yeah. live. And it's like every day. And Marty, you have yeah. no idea. Marty. This guy will not stay home. He will not, Marty. He's been in Vegas for five nights. And by the way, nobody goes to Vegas for five nights. Impossible. No, my, he no, tried to stay a six. No. You know when they tell I have you. A 40, I got a 40-hour limit, boys. I'm 48. I'm talking touch, touch down to take off. I got 40 hours. And uh first of all i have so much to discuss with you guys uh first of all i love you thanks for having me it's great to be on again Always. was that we're gonna start with like, the brownie break was that like was that brownies break i saw i heard seven <laughs> advertisements marty for, i got like th- dental care for, <laughs> that's stone Creek dental. i mean we've got kids Kipo going Brady's. to college marty Brady's. i gotta send two kids through college man hey I ain't hating. You're talking about the guy who has more advertisements than anybody on ESPN. So I'm all in on the advertisements. Uh, also, we, we got to jump into Dunaway's trip to Vegas. Laney, Laney has been in Vegas since Thursday morning. So I'm surprised you guys didn't cross paths at some point around 2.30 in the morning in some random casino. I, I wish I'd have uh, known. I'd have been looking for her because I was, uh, you know, I'm a people watcher. I'd have been looking for her. Uh, so, so what was the highlight of your Vegas experience? Um, truthfully, uh, seeing Katy Perry walking around or in and out of the casino, but she's surrounded by six bodyguards. I couldn't get to her to talk to her. Laney. So this, this is how we roll like last Tuesday or something. Again, Laney left Thursday to go to Vegas last Tuesday. Or so she's like, Martin, can you get us tickets to see Katy Perry? on Friday night or Saturday night or whatever it was. And I was like, well, that's not the most notice, but let me give it a ride. <laughs> <laughs> so I call CAA and lo and behold, they, uh, we, we paid a handsome price for Laney and her girlfriends to go see Katy Perry in her residency. What I did not expect was to wake up the next morning to multiple videos of for example, Katy Perry climbing in and out of a giant toilet. Yes. During her performance. And Laney goes, Marty, there's a poop emoji singing in this show. This is a different experience than that which I'm uh, typically accustomed. But they have had a blast. Uh, Laney is still in Vegas right now as we speak. And what? lastly, before we get to whatever y'all want to talk about, I will be in Birmingham on Friday night. For the concert? To see Eric, yes, to see Eric play a country music show. And uh, I think this will be my seventh, sixth or seventh show on this tour. Wow. Wow. So yes, you, I have do, seen. Do, do, you might as well become a roadie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, man, I have, I have invested heavily in this individual. And uh, I care about him deeply. And I just want to make sure that. Since nobody's coming to the shows yeah. at all, yes, and yes. since he's only breaking every attendance record in every arena he's playing, uh, I want to make sure that he feels supported. Can you tell me is uh, is there a chance that special guests will be with him? Uh, like Morgan Wallen jumped on stage with him up in Nashville yep. for a couple of shows. Actually, it was the other way around. He jumped on okay. stage with Morgan, uh, and Morgan did so. There's an interesting moment uh, at the second or third show of this tour. There was a uh, COVID outbreak in Eric's crew. And so Eric had to play by himself solo. And Morgan randomly showed up in Philly to, to support Eric. So it was only fit. Morgan, Morgan sold out Bridgestone Arena for three consecutive nights. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is an historic moment for him as an artist not only did he have the number one album in the world in all across all genres his a dangerous record but what he's doing on this tour is amazing and his fans are very passionate so i don't know i've not talked to eric this week i don't know if somebody's going to jump up on stage with him or not but uh it would not surprise me if that happened okay so outside of the country genre most random really good concert you've ever seen Um, well, the first concert I ever went to was Bobby Brown in seventh grade. <laughs> was my, he with my, New Edition uh, or straight up Bobby Brown? Was it my prerogative? Uh, straight up, straight up Bobby. Yeah, yeah. man, I can do what I want to do. Uh, <laughs> ain't nobody humping around. Uh, that whole, 
that whole time right there, um, I, my parents obviously did not know what they were agreeing to. <laughs> and we went to see Bobby, myself, and a couple of buddies of mine. And uh, so that was interesting. I've seen – so I've seen Pearl Jam so many times, Lance. I, one of the coolest things I've ever seen, to be honest, and this is probably my answer, I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan. Eddie Vedder is one of the three or four people on my bucket list interviews outstanding I'll go with that you. I've never had the opportunity to, to chat with. Yeah. We went to see my brother-in-law, Mike, is in the 10 Club. He's a hardcore, hardcore Pearl Jam guy. And he got tickets through the 10 Club for he, – he got two tickets. And we went to see Pearl Jam play a couple summers ago at Fenway Park. Oh, wow. And I thought this was a couple hours into the show, and Eddie was two or three bottles of red wine in at this point. And he stopped the show for a minute, and he told this amazing story. He said, guys, when we were first getting started, there was an old crappy Howard Johnson right across the street here from Fenway Park, and we stayed in that Howard Johnson. And he mentioned the bar that they played that night and the crowd, as you might imagine, went ballistic because he mentioned this small Boston hole in the wall bar that, that Pearl Jam played as a new, a new act. And he said that night after that show, when we got back to that crappy Howard Johnson, we were chatting and we said to one another, someday we're going to be across the street playing Fenway park, but we had to have a bridge in order to get from that bar to this moment tonight, we had to have a bridge in order to become what we are from what we were. And then he had this dramatic pause and he pointed out into the assemblage of 20, whatever thousand people. And he goes, you are that bridge. Oh. And as you can, it still gives me chills. As you can imagine, the crowd just went like it was, it was ear busting how amazing that moment was. And I was like in tears. I was so pumped up. I was drunk too, but that's another point. That's another <laughs> part of the question. But just in a that Pearl Jam is amazing. They are amazing. Their body of work is timeless. And uh, the intensity with which they play and their evolution as human beings and, and artists, I could go on and on about it. But I would say it was that show at Fenway Park that is the answer. Marty Smith is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Watch this, Marty. Uh, throw out three Pearl Jam songs and watch what Rockstar does. Go, just, just one at a time. Me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Throw Me? Out a, yeah, throw out a, th Marty, throw out a Pearl Jam song. Um, a live okay, wish hope. list. Oh, hang on. One, at a time, one at a time. Go alive. Oh. Alive is track three oh, on alive. Al alive is track three on album one. Wish if, list. If, wish list is track five on album four. Give him another one, Marty. Uh, Black. Black is out. Track five on album one. Yeah, he he, he can do the whole the whole catalog you, you that way. You can't give him what he can't do. Um. Well, I can give him what he can't do because none of us know the yellow lead better. There's not like he can make up words and be correct because that's what Eddie does. Yeah, well, the yellow lead better is was a uh, track number five off a bootleg called uh, Five Musketeers. Wow. <laughs> wow. Lyrics are a different thing. Yeah. Uh, we'll ding in. That's credit for Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> and I, by the way, I was at that second show at Boston, at the uh, Fenway Park. I, were you at the first or second? They did two in a row. They did a Labor Day weekend. And I, was I can't hear him. If oh, you can't hear Rockstar? Talk, no, right. if he's uh, talking to me, I can't hear him. Oh, man, you, you missed his now? trick. Oh, no. So you didn't know what he was doing there the whole time. No, I had no idea. Oh, great great television faking by yeah, you, though. Marty, you not smiling you and chuckled? Nodding. Yes, yes. Oh, what Rockstar was doing was naming track and album of every song you called out. Can you hear me now, Marty? Oh, I can hear you now. Yeah. All right, now, now, was, now do it. All right, now do it. Track three, album one. Uh, wish list was track five, album album five. Black was track five, album five, and Yellow Ledbetter was five off the uh, bootleg called Five Musketeers what? originally. What about Corduroy? Corduroy is track number eight on album three. That's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> yeah, it's a absolutely phenomenal song. What about Elderly Woman Behind the Counter? Elderly Woman Behind the Counter in a Small Town is track number ten <laughs> off album number two. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is pretty impressive. That's a I don't talent. know if he's right or not, but I'm, he I'm is. impressed. You, you can no, check. he's right. We've checked. Trust yeah. me. We've, we, we've tried. Yeah, we filled, a, we filled an entire July show yeah. one time just doing this. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got to have a hobby, Marty. Yeah. That July tweener show is rough sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, 
Uh, yeah, it's uh, but Rock, sir, ask him the question you had about uh, Fenway. Yeah, uh, Fenway. I was at the second show. They did two shows that sun that summer. Was the last leg of that tour. Which one were you? The first one or the second one? There was a I Sunday night no show. Idea. It was a Sunday night I show or a Tuesday night I, I show? I think it was a Sunday night show. Okay, you were at I the first. I think it was Sunday night. Okay, we were at the second um, show because we saw, uh, what's his name on um, Superbad? Jonah Hill. No, Nick, uh, <laughs> the fake ID, the, the guy, the... Oh, McLovin. 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 I was walking around and McLovin's walking around by himself. He's supposedly a huge Pearl Jam fan. Yeah, he didn't have a I bunch of sitting. women with him? No, he was by himself. So, my brother-in-law, the tickets he got through the 10 Club were really good. They were kind of... I first or second row in sort of the second tier on the floor, I guess is the right way yeah, to say it. They were great. great seats. And so I'm just, I'm sitting there, we're having beers. We're just on cloud nine. I've scored this random, you know, Hampton Inn or courtyard Marriott or something. We're like stoked. Like we got it made right now. We've driven seven and a half hours to get there. And all of a sudden I hear Marty, and I turn and look, and it's Kenny Mayne. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? And he goes, well, what the hell are you doing here? Same thing you're doing here. <laughs> he's boy, like, Kenny knows the band. He's super close with all those guys. So he's at all kinds of shows. It was great to see him there, too. I love that guy. So, so important question here. Uh, better 80s movie, Roadhouse or Red Dawn? Well, I'm a Roadhouse guy. Uh, I mean, they're both great, but. I'm a Roadhouse guy, and I think Roadhouse is so underappreciated. Um, you know that song, Angel Eyes? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Jeff, Jeff Healy. Healy. That's one of my favorite songs of all Jeff time. Healy. Jeff it's a, Healy. It's man. a phenomenal yeah. song, oh. and I was on a vacation. The, 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 the participants of the vacation will remain, will, will remain nameless, but we were, we were having a very good time down in the islands, and this was very recently uh, in the, within the last couple of years, and – uh, my buddy's wife took over the jukebox and she is playing these songs. And that song came on and time stopped. And there were like 10 people hammered off of margaritas singing that song at the top of our lungs. And it is so, like, if y'all don't, if y'all are listening and you don't know that song, go find it. That's oh. your homework because it's an all timer that people just don't remember. Hey, no, so, I love that. That's one of my favorite songs of all time. Jeff Healy Band, song. Angel Eyes. Yes, man, yes. he's so, so good. So we've got a, uh, a friend that listens to the show, Terry Henley, and he's really good friends with Jimmy, the bad guy in uh, Roadhouse. And no so, way. So Jimmy nice. has actually listened to our show before. What's up, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't end well for Jimmy, though, did it? It did not. I, I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm a big Roadhouse guy. And so let, let me – one of the claims to fame – uh, that I carry with me all the time is, is this is a bit of a, a right-hand turn, sort of, but not really because of Patrick Swayze. But uh, Dirty Dancing was filmed at least partly in my hometown. And Mountain Lake Resort is in Pembroke, Virginia, which is basically my hometown. I grew up in Parisburg. It's neighbor, neighboring towns. And most of the inside the cottages and the main grand area were mountain lake resort where my high school did prom and all that stuff our buddy lauren sisler actually got married there yeah she did that's right for that reason yeah so that's crazy um, well, unfortunately the lake is now dry because of some tectonic plate science it's way over my head <laughs> <laughs> oh it's it's the bathtub method method it moves and it just drains it the just, water out yeah we need somebody to take a bath and fill that sucker back up <laughs> <laughs> all right he is marty smith go follow him on twitter at marty smith espn if you see him at the eric church concert tell him the next round said what up dunaway's going to try to get backstage he's going to be texting marty i am not i'm uh, not that I guy know, i'm not that guy i'm not that guy <laughs> Uh, Marty, enjoy it, man. It's always fun, buddy. Y'all are awesome. Have a great one. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Marty Smith with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. <laughs>